from the bottom, bottom of my heart to the depths of my soul. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Completely, yes. My soul. God for enabling us to come out this morning to the house of worship one more time. Yes. Father God, now we invite you in. Oh, we need your presence, God. For you said in your word, whether it's one, two, or two to three, or gather, touching, or agreeing in your name, there you'll be in the midst of them. And God, this morning, we say thank you. Thank you we say welcome, Holy Spirit. Yes. We thank you for all that you've done, yes. all that yes. you're doing, and all that you will do. Amen. Now, God, we ask that you take this service, that you would go forth, God, yes. that your word would not fall on deaf ears, God, yes. that somebody will hear your word, somebody will feel your presence, yes. and somebody will see the glory of the Lord. Yeah. Oh God, and go running, saying, what must I do to be saved? Oh God, we just love you today. And we thank you for loving us, God. Have mercy on us, God. Forgive us for our sins, God. Oh God, teach us, God. Teach us to walk up righteous, God. Oh God, pointing the lost to the cross. Oh God, we just love you today, God. We ask that you will have your way in this service as only you can. For it's in Jesus' holy, mighty, matchless name that we pray. Yeah, yeah. And for his name's sake, amen. amen. At this time, we'll have a hymn of praise. Yeah. 
together. Come on. Let's praise the Lord today for his mighty word. I just want to praise you yeah, yeah. forever and ever and ever and ever for all you've done. Me. Blessings and glory, and honor, and honor, they all belong to you. Thank you, Jesus. Followed by our scripture. Amen. Again, we say good morning to everyone. Good morning. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers. Let us prepare our hearts and minds to speak to our Lord and Savior. And as we do so, let us think about all the blessings that he has provided for us on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Yes. Yes, Lord. Eternal and all-wise creator. Yes, Lord. Father God, we come to you with thanksgiving on our lips. Yes. Thank you, dear God, for your love your grace, and your mercy. Yes, For Father God, we know that without it, we wouldn't exist. But with it, we do exist. And we say thank you. Thank you, dear God, that you woke us up this morning. Yes. Gave us the mind set to move and do as we do. And Lord, we thank you for that. Realizing that there are some that are unable to move. And there are some that are, are not even breathing. Yes, God. But here we are blessed this special day. Yes, God. And Lord, we love you for that. And Father God, we ask that you would allow your Holy Spirit to just come on these grounds and saturate it. And then Lord, as you do so, touch the airways that others will be touched. Yes, 
that they will be feeling the healing and the needs and the glory of your power. Now, Father God, we just can't thank you enough for being the God that you are. And have blessed this service and bless all the services throughout the land. For Lord, we know that you are the God that we need to serve. So touch this world and let them know that you're still in charge. That you made us all and that nobody else but you can do what you do. We love you, we praise you, and we give you the glory. For it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. your Bibles, your swords with you today. Our scripture today will be coming out of the book of Mark, the 13th chapter. I'll be reading from the first to the 13th verse. Keeping your mind stayed on God as he penetrates and in your hearts. I know that we are not in Rome, but if you can just lend me your ear and hear what the word of God is saying. The book of Mark, chapter 13 from the first to the 13th verse. And it reads, And as he went out of the temple, one of his disciples said unto him, Master, see what manner of stones and what buildings are here. And Jesus answering said unto him, Seest thou these great buildings? There shall not be left one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives over against the temple, Peter and James and John and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall these things be? And what shall these things be when all these things shall be fulfilled. And Jesus answering said unto them, and he began to say, Take heed lest any man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And when ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, be ye not troubled, for such things must needs be, but the end shall not be yet. For nations shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be earthquakes in, the, in diverse places, and there shall be famine and troubles, these are the beginnings of sorrows. But take heed to yourselves, for they shall deliver you up to councils and in the synagogues, and, and ye shall be beaten, and ye shall be brought before rulers and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them. And the gospel must first be published among all nations. But when they shall lead you and deliver you up, take no thought beforehand what ye shall speak, neither do ye 
premeditate, but whatsoever shall be given you in that hour that speak ye, for it is not ye that speak, but the Holy Ghost. Now the brother shall betray the brother to death, and the father the son, their parents, and shall cause them to be put to death. Let me read that again. Now the brother shall betray the brother to death, and the father the son, and children shall rise up against their parents and shall cause them to be put to death. Verse 13, And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But he, but he that shall endure until the end, the same shall be saved. The word of God for the people of God. Blessed be the name of God. Song of Inspiration. I 
church theme. Thank you, Lord. Our church theme comes out of the book of Matthew. Each one reach one. Matthew 28, 19 and 20. Let us read together. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Hallelujah. You may have your seat. And how do we do that? How do we do that? We must tell of his goodness. We must bless his holy name. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. At this time, we will have our announcements, and they are as follows. Vacation Bible School will be held June 18th through the 22nd. 
That is this week, brothers and sisters. Amen. Hallelujah, somebody. Let's get ready. Get ready, get ready. There's a need for teachers, arts and crafts, band drivers, security, and ministries to sign up to feed during this week. The sign-up sheet would be in the vestibule. Please see Deacon Michelle Florence or Minister Robinson, who's on the pulpit today. If you would like to assist, please see the registration information in your bulletin. Student, 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 doesn't matter how old y'all, <laughs> Student Recognition Day will be held on Sunday, June 23rd, doing morning worship. The WMBA Union will be held on Saturday, June 29th at Springfield Baptist Church, beginning at 9 a.m. Women's Day, all the women in the house, yes, will be held on Sunday, July 21st. Our guest speaker will be none other than the Reverend Dr. Michelle Gooding from Heron Grove Free Will Baptist Church in Kinston, North Carolina. I had the opportunity to meet her a month or two ago, and I heard her just briefly. Mm -hmm. And I just want to let you know, I sat there not even knowing that she was going to be speaker for Women's Day. But I said, Lord, that's a powerhouse right there, Lord. Oh, Jesus. So First Baptist, get ready, get ready, get ready. Hallelujah. For what is to come. Hallelujah. I would also like to read about the manifest events as you can see in your bulletins as we began to celebrate our Juneteenth and you see everything there but I want to make one correction at the bottom of that where it says freedom of expression the grand finale celebration which is next Sunday 23rd um, at, it said 6 to 8, but we want to correct no, that at the no, time. No, no. It, That's correct. No, it's the Freedom Ball. The Freedom Ball. Is incorrect. Is it's incorrect. Right. And it's not from 6 to 8, it's but it's 10. from 7 to 10 p.m. Oh, okay. Please mark your bulletins. Thank you, Ms. Javita. The Vacation Bible School page is now live on the website. Please follow the steps listed below to register as well. Okay, and I was told to announce the times for Vacation Bible School. Now, if you have children, if you have grandchildren, some may even have great-grandchildren, you got neighbors who have children. And we're all neighbors. Not just your next door neighbor. We're all neighbors. Please bring them out to vacation Bible school. Because again, we talk about Sunday school, but for the little ones, this is where they get their beginning too. It's vacation Bible school. I'm excited about the five and six year olds I'm going to be teaching, you know, because I'm going to learn something new as well. So just want to let you know from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. will be the times of Vacation Bible School. Now, you know, back in the day, we started Monday through Friday, but we're starting Tuesday this year, Tuesday the 18th. And then we'll have our presentation night on Friday night. But we'll have all kinds of events on Saturday the 22nd. So please, children and no children, come out and support. Come out and let's have fun. In the name of Jesus, right. let's have fun. We yeah. sit with our faces, no smiles on our faces. <laughs> and a frown is just a smile turned upside down. Come on. Let us love the Lord and what he's doing for us mm -hmm. and what he enables us to do. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. 
So at this time, I will read the memory verse. It reads from Psalms 119, 105, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. The thought of the day, a truly rich man is one whose children run in his arms when his hands are empty. Did you hear that? Mm -hmm. They run when his hands are empty. They're not just running for something. Right. They're running because of who he is. Yeah. And we should run to God because of who he is. Yeah. Praise God, not what he can give us. Praise God. At this time, we have our pastoral remarks. Pastor. Good morning, First Baptist. Good morning. Good morning to each of you who may be visiting us today. This is a wonderful day that the Lord has made. I rejoice every time I wake up. I'm just grateful to be here. And I'm grateful to see each and every one of you in the house of the Lord. Uh, my wife and I, we want to share our sentiments of just coming and being here. We don't take for granted that the Lord woke us up this morning. Amen. Uh, I just want to reemphasize the Vacation Bible School portion. And uh, please come out and join us. Adults, come out. Let's have a good time together. We need for you to support Vacation Bible School, starting on Tuesday night, starting at 6 o'clock. Uh, by the way, you don't need to, we do have food. Uh, we want you to stop in and uh, instead of going home to eat, say, well, I got to get something to eat first. I got to stop by and do that. You can eat here and then just enjoy uh, the festivities that we have uh, during that time from 6 to 8. And also, I just want to reemphasize, as Ms. Jovita pointed out about Juneteenth, uh, that's very, very important. Come out and then let's have a good time. When you go to these uh, type of events, uh, it's, it's, it blesses your heart, and I believe you'll be blessed if you come out. Uh, Bible school has been suspended uh, up until um, time school starts back up in September. So uh, please don't go to the Bible study link now. But I do look forward to you all coming back. And when you do come back, let's come in good numbers uh, because uh, we've had a wonderful study. And I want to congratulate those of you who went through the year. I was so amazed on Wednesday night, um, the questions that were asked and the students were answering them so wonderfully. I said, look at all these little Bible scholars that we have. Uh, they learned so much about the book of Job. Many of you may know the book of Job and know what it was all about, but they were able to answer in such a way they made their pastor very proud. And I think the teacher, Marion Tucker, was very proud. We talked about it and we say, wow, look how much they have learned. So you will learn a lot that you can apply to your spiritual life. Uh, when you come to Bible study and when you come to Sunday school. Sunday school is important too. We're not suspending Sunday school. We're going to continue Sunday school. So come out and enjoy, uh, come out to uh, enjoy Sunday school as well. Had a wonderful teacher this morning, Mr. George Newkirk. Uh, we caught, my wife and I caught some of that. Please come out and let us learn together. If you want to grow spiritually, you wonder why you're having a hard time in your life, if you learn the Word of God and learn how to apply it by coming to Sunday school and Bible study and coming to church, you will be amazed. And when the devil come and assault you, you'll have something in your spirit to tell the devil to back up. Amen. Praise be to God. God bless you. God keep you. And may heaven smile upon you is our, is our prayer for each and every one of you. God bless. Praise the Lord, church. Hallelujah. I guess y'all know what time it is, right? Yeah. It's offering time. Yes. <laughs> you know? And I would just like to say, uh, you know, how many of you truly believe that God honors his word? Amen. Just slip your hand. Amen. Slip your hand up if you believe that God truly honored his words. Amen? Well, then, 
if you believe that, then you believe that when God says that if you pay your tithes, he will in return give you anywhere from 10 to 100% fold back, you know? So when you pay your tithes, don't look at it like you've given God something. That's right, sir. But you look at it like, hey, he's making a way for he can give me some more. Because that's what God's about. He's about supplying us with our needs. And he hasn't failed yet. And I don't think he ever will fail because he is a true loving God. So we're going to turn this part of the service over to the, in the hands of the ushers that they might come forth and collect our offering. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Bless those that were able to give and bless those that were not able to give. And bless this offering that is used to your good. In your name, amen. Amen. All these come with thee. receive the word of God. Let us be open 
minded. Not only of just who God is, but what God can do. And let us focus on that word endurance. That word endurance, you know, you don't compromise. You don't waver. You stand the course. So as our speaker for the hour comes to deliver the message that God has given her, let us be open-minded, open-hearted to what God is saying to his people. For it's time for us to stand for God, for what's right, or we'll fall for anything. So as our speaker comes, as you know her, Minister Arnetta Robinson, let us receive her. Let's don't sit down and be quiet, because we know she has that little quiet spirit. But it's a spirit when being used by God, he gets his point across. And that's what we are here for. It's the word. It's not to see what we have on, how your hair is today. You know what I'm saying? How much money you put into play? Have you moved to a new address? It's about what God is telling his people. Let us receive the word of God today. And let us go out into his courts, spreading the good news. God bless you, Minister Robinson. Let us say it together. God bless you, Minister Robinson. The choir will come with the song, followed by our word for this morning. Amen. Some of y'all ain't moved all morning long, but it's all right. Yeah. Amen. But we still going to give God some praise. Amen. The song says, let it rise. Said in his word, he said, I even I'll draw all men unto me. So we came to lift up the name of Jesus. And then Amen. So say I want to put a whole house. Amen. And get with us and say, they're gonna find you. I believe Minister Robinson will get a little flame under her feet and she will come on and do what thus said the Lord. Amen. Amen. Come on, put your hands together.
to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I do recognize my pastor, Pastor Lowry, First Lady Eva Lowry, Deacons Trustees, my husband Deacon Robinson and Pulpit, uh, Minister Newkirk and Reverend Florence and Minister Mangum and all of you, praise the Lord. To God be the glory of all the things he has done. Amen. And I just thank God for another day's journey yes. amen and happy father's day yes. to all the fathers and all the men yes. that have been fathers to our praise children amen. amen praise the lord thank you minister newkirk for reading that uh, scripture mark 13 chapter 13 and i'm just going to lift up verse 13 and ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we just come before you as humble as we know how. Oh, God, we love you, Lord Jesus. But, Lord, we know that you first loved us. Oh, God, hide me behind the cross that they see none of me but all of you. Let your power rise, God. Yes. Let your anointing rise, God. Yes. And we will shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, Thank you, for saving a wretch like me. And we give you the glory and honor and the victory in Jesus' name. Jesus. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. This has been a, a week. <laughs> Amen. I've been tossing and turning and trying to get this message and seem like I was just kind of laid back for some reason and I just prayed and Minister Mangum called me and she said well just take a drive and let God anoint you and in that quiet time praise the Lord but I know that God is able amen amen, amen. I would just like to start out with um, my sister Ann was a school counselor at an elementary school. And every year she had to plan a career day event for the school. So she would invite doctors, firefighters, policemen, lawyers, journalists, hairstylists, whoever that she could get to come and present. And after the uh, event, she had students to write a note to those uh, professionals and a note to her to let them know what they got out of it. And my sister and I was, um, I went to my sister's house on the other week and we were cleaning out some paperwork and I came across some notes that some of the students wrote that is so cute. As our uh, Art Link letters would say, the children can say the darnest things. <laughs> Amen. So here's a note from um, one of the students. And she was telling what she thought about the uh, career day. And she said, Dear Miss Williams, I am sorry, but I did not like any of the four things that I went to. <laughs> I am very sorry. And she said, Sorry, Addie. 
Another student wrote to a journalist that he, uh, she went to see. She said, Dear Mrs. Journalist, I enjoyed every part of the session. Many people say that I am a great writer. So now that you told me about journalism, I am very much interested. I would like to be a journalist on medical, on medical problems, if they have one in journalism. Seems like a great opportunity, and it looks like fun. I appreciate you coming to South Fork Elementary. Sorry for, sorry for all the spelling mistakes. It isn't the school's fault. I promise it will be better by the time I get hired as a journalist. <laughs> One more. This is so cute. Evidently, this student uh, went to a doctor that was there. He said, dear doctor, you really inspired me. I don't want, I don't want to be a doctor just because they get to do cool stuff. I want to help kids so they're not dead at the age of five or something. I am most interested in being a brain surgeon. I want to open and make them operate and make them feel better because no one likes a dead kid. If you do, dang, you must be crazy or something. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Those were so cute. They had written letters over the time and and um, one was dated uh, back in 2004, I believe. Mm. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. But God is so good, and we love our children, and we thank God for fathers and men that are raising our children. Some are single parents. Some are maybe in prison or whatever. But thank God, and let's pray for our men that are raising children, whether they're in the home or out of the home. Amen. Amen. All right. As the world turns, pray. Some of you remember the soap opera As the World Turns, and you probably watched it every day. I never got into this particular soap opera, but I did watch all my children and the young and the restless. I found myself getting sucked into it and had to let it go. As the World Turns was the second longest running soap opera. It first aired in 1956. I was only five years old. The storyline focused on the dealings of the Hughes, Munsons, and the rest of the residents of the fictitious Midwestern town called Oakdale. It explored the complicated relationship and life problems of families mostly headed by doctors, lawyers, and other professionals. The final episode aired sep September 17, 2010. Now Mark is the second book of the New Testament. It is the shortest of the four Gospels and tells us about what Jesus does rather than tell us about what he says. John Mark, who travels with Paul on his first missionary journey, write the gospel in Rome about 25 years after Jesus dies. It is the first gospel to be written. Mark does not write about Jesus' birth or childhood. He begins this story of Jesus when he was 30 years old. Mark tells about Jesus' temptation. He works in his own home region in Galilee, and he's choosing and training his disciples. It describes 18 of the many miracles Jesus does and tells us that Jesus was not only the master of the universe, but, he, but that he lives life as a servant, helping people wherever he goes. When Jesus' work of healing and teaching is coming to an end, he begins to tell his disciples about the future. Mark tells us what Jesus taught about his troubles that lay ahead. He recalls Jesus' last supper with his disciples, Jesus' arrest in the Garden of Gethsemane, and his death on the cross. Mark ends this, this gospel with his resurrection from the dead. 
Jesus spent his time helping people. The book of Mark wastes no time in getting down to business, a single sentence introduction, and not a digression to be found from beginning to end. An event has taken place that radically changes the way we look at and experience at the world, and he can't wait to tell us about it. There's an air of breathless excitement in nearly every sentence he writes. The sooner we get the message, the better off we'll be for the message is good, incredibly good. God is here and he is on our side. Yes. The bare announcement that God exists doesn't particularly qualify as news. Most people in most centuries have believed in the existence of God or gods. It may well be, in fact, that human beings in aggregate and through the centuries have given more attention and concern to divinity than to all to, to divinity than to all their other concerns put together, food, housing, clothing, pleasure, work, family, or whatever. But that God is here right now and on our side, actively seeking to help us in the way we must need help disqualifies as news. But common as belief in God is, there is also an enormous amount of guesswork and gossip surrounding the subject, which results in a runaway superstition, anxiety, and exploitation. So Mark understandably is in a hurry to tell us what happened in the birth, life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. The event that reveals the truth of God to us so that we can live in reality and not illusion. He doesn't want us to waste a minute of these precious lives of ours ignorant of this most practical of all matters, that God is passionate to save us. As Jesus walked away from the temple, one of his disciples said, Teacher, look at that stonework, those buildings. The temple was adorned with crowns, shields, goblets, chain of gold, and a golden vine with its vast clusters, which was the gift of Herod. The temple was white limestones, and its beauty and strength made it admired to all nations. Jesus said, you are impressed by this grandiose architecture? There's a stone, there's not a stone in the whole work that is not going to end up in a heap of rubble. Mm. Jesus started them by foretelling its utter destruction, mm. which within 40 years was fulfilled to the letter. Mm. The emperor Vespasian and his son Titus, after a three year siege, took Jerusalem and destroyed its temple later. As he was sitting on Mount Olives in full view of the temple. Peter, James, John, and Andrew got him off by himself and asked, tell us, when is this going to happen? What sign will get that things are coming to a head? Jesus began, watch out for doomsday deceivers. Many leaders are going to show up with forged identities, claiming I'm the one. They will deceive a lot of people. When you hear wars and rumors of wars, keep your head and don't panic. Yes. This is routine history and no sign of the end. Nations will fight nation and ruler fight ruler over and over. Earthquakes will occur in various places. There will be famines, but these things are nothing compared to what's coming. Yes. One could say that our own times are marked by wars, famines in some places, and extremely problems and disasters brought on by weather. However, there are other signs to be aware of also. Jesus refers to these signs as the beginning of birth pains. Mm -hmm. This an an analogy indicates that in the end times, these types of events will proceed to get increasingly more numerous and more severe. Oh, wow. The climate over the U.S. 
has been on a warming trend at a rate of about 0.338 Fahrenheit degrees per decade. Summer 2024 is likely to be one of the hottest on record in the U.S. according to an update outlook released by the weather company at Atmospheric G2. Two recent summers were among the nation's hottest, 1936 and 2021, are cited as the hottest summer in U.S. records dating to 1895, according to NOAA. Watch out, they're going to drag you into court, and then it will go from bad to worse. Dog eat dog. Everyone at your throat because you carry my name. You were placed there as sentinels to truth. The message has to be preached all across the world. Amen. Many of the apostles were killed or martyred. Yeah. Mm. When they bring you betrayed into court, don't worry about what you will say. When times come, say what's on your heart. The Holy Spirit will make his witness yeah. in and through you. Yeah. It's going to be brother killing brother, father killing child, children killing parents. There's no telling who will hate you because of me. Stay with it. That's required. Stay with it to the end. You won't be sorry. You'll be saved. As the world turns, we all need to pray. If you are praying, keep on praying. If you are not, you need to start. Yeah. And if you pray sometime, step it up. The world is going from bad to worse. Yeah. It's a doggy dog world. Yeah. It's all for me and none for thee. Yeah. In other words, it's all about me, myself, and I. Yeah. Yeah. Right. The North Carolina Education Lottery set a record for sales, prizes, and education funding in the last fiscal year with $4.3 billion in revenue. As a result, it generated more than $1 billion for education programs for the first time the lottery has ever hit that mark. It has been said that nine out of 10 people who win the lottery within five years, they are worse off than they were before winning the lottery. First Timothy 6.10 says, for the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil, for which some have strayed from the faith in their greediness and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Put your money with where your faith is. If you have your trust in God, pay your tithes and your offering to him. The economy, crime rate, divorce rate, jobless rate, foreclosures, and homes without fathers and men not being men have gotten this world turned upside down. Mm -hmm. Statistics states that crime in the U.S. accounts for more death, injuries, and loss of property than all natural disasters combined. Mm -hmm. 12 million crimes happen in the U.S. every single year. Mm -hmm. 2.2 million people are in prison. One million gang members are responsible up to 80% of the crimes convicted. 100,000 rapes occur every single year. Every year, one out of every five people is a victim of a crime. No other nation on earth has a rate that is higher as, as the U.S. As the world turns, pray. Divorce rate in America, 41% of marriages divorce in their first marriage, 60% in their second marriage, and 73% in their third marriage. Dr. Tony Evans talks about how 40% of homes are without fathers, and 70% minorities are homes without fathers. He also talks about how men are to be an influence to our younger generation. He told the story about a teenage male bull, elephants, running wild, no direction, and just acting crazy. Come to find out, there was no adult male bull elephant in the herd. Hunters and poachers hunted and killed the adult male elephant for
for the ivory. Researchers that study animal behavior decided that they would drop some adult bull elephants in the herd of the teenage bulls. The adult male bulls began flapping their ears, raising their trunks, and making a loud, weird sound. Flapping their ears, raising their trunks, and making a loud noise. They kept on flapping their ears, raising their trunks, and making a loud, weird sound until order was restored among the teenage yes, bulls. Mm -hmm. Men need to be present in the lives of our young people Amen. to restore order. Amen. A former high school principal also asked Dr. Evans to come and speak to the boys at this particular high school. He said the gangs have just taken over. Dr. Evans got 25 of his deacons, went over to the high school and had the boys to assemble in the auditorium. He said, as the boys walked by, some of them have never seen that many men at one time in one place dressed in suits and ties. Mm -hmm. And as Dr. Evans was speaking, if a student started talking, a deacon would look at him and say, he's talking, and be visible and in a very way, as the world turns, pray. I was looking at my Sunday school commentary and saw this article about I'm a dead, I'm a dad, not a deadbeat. It's time to raise our voices and rally against that image of black men as deadbeat dads. Mm -hmm. We're not talking about the selfish, underloving narcissistic, self-proclaimed kings who are fathers at tax season and ghosts during the year. We're talking about men who actually want to be present in their children's lives, yeah. who are kept away by some women and thus are forced into the category of deadbeat dads. In some scenarios, vindictive baby mamas enlist the law to their advantage to satisfy their need to get back at their man and end up driving away men who want to be dedicated fathers. The men are labeled deadbeats and the children suffer the most. Amen. Now let's be clear, we're not bashing single mothers forced to be parents, forced to be both parents due to an absent father. However, we uplift women Many members of our community often forget our men, even viewing them as unnecessary, which in turn can prevent our sons from becoming the men we want them to be. As women, we can't continue to punish and shame the fathers of our children. Despite any conflict between these men and the drama-filled women in their lives, we have to help them become dedicated fathers, and continue to be relevant in the lives of their children. Yeah. Our young people are the ones that are suffering from all the mess us as adults do and say. Mm -hmm. But I know as God, but I know a God that can and will deliver us from all the hurt, the shame, and the pain that this world brings. Yeah. My God is able if we only trust in him. Don't let this world turn your life upside down, misguide, mislead, and deceive you. We know in the end, God is going to win. As the world turns around you, Satan will try to throw you all kinds of curveballs, foul balls, and he may even try to knock you out because he knows his end is near. Yes. But don't let him deceive you. Keep on believing. Right. Keep on trusting. Yes. And keep on praying. Yes. Don't let the enemy knock you out. Yes. If he knock you down, get yes. back up. Yes. If he try to knock out one out, keep the eye, other eye open. Yes. Praise the Lord. Amen. God is already blessing us. Yes. Fathers, 
stand and let God use you. Men, stand and let God use you. God is able to do anything, so trust in him and know that he is on your side. He will work it out. Fathers may be in prison. Fathers may be homeless. Praise the Lord. But God said he is with you. So don't give up. Don't throw in the towel. Don't give up. God is able to do all that he can do. So trust and love the Lord with all your might, with all your body, with all your physical strength. Love God and he will love you back. As the world turns, continue to pray and know that God is a prayer answering God. Amen. 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 You know, while mm. Minister Robinson was sitting there preaching, I was saying, you know, I think God must have visited her last night <laughs> because that was a sermon that was needed a long, long time ago. Because I'm telling you, there is so much going on in the world with our young folks and with, with our old people too, all of us, that need help. And that word, every man and child on earth need to have heard it. And if they haven't heard it today, they need to somehow get that message to them because it's a needful sermon that we need to hear. You know, sometimes when we listen at things that is best for us, we don't like to hear it because we get all entangled in ourselves because some of us know that we're not doing what we should be doing. So we get all upset, get mad with the preacher. Because, you know, she's talking about me. But what you need to realize is that it's not her. It's God. It's God. You know? So when somebody preach something that tear you up inside, don't look at the preacher. Look at God. Take it to God. Because he is the one that is giving the message. And I'm telling you. It was a message worth hearing today. I, w- I want to praise God for you today. Amen. I want to praise God for you. Amen. Amen. Now, um, I'm here to open up the doors of the church for those that might be here. We don't know if there's anyone here that have not surrendered your soul unto the Lord, but if there are, you may come forth now and give your soul over to the Lord. You know, you, you, you may, it doesn't matter what stage you're in. You might need to be baptized. You might already have Christian experience and you're looking for a home. You might come with a letter from another church and you need to find yourself a new home. We're here right here at First Baptist are willing to receive you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we want to say that, you know, you you heard the message uh, just now. And the word was saying, when we look at all these things that are going on in the world today, you know, it is following the scripture in the Bible. But it says that, you know, like these things that, that, that is going on right now doesn't say that it is the end time is upon us. But it says you better look forward to it coming soon. Because these are just times of sorrow right now that is taking place. But the end time is right on its tail. 
following in the footsteps. So don't think just because it's not the end time for revealing itself right now that you got all kinds of time. Do you realize what the end time is for you? The moment you draw your last breath. When you suck that last breath in, that is your end time right there. It's up on you. You either going to be right with God then or it's over. Because you, you, you lose that breath, you, you're not going to have an opportunity to come back and, and, and say, Lord, I, 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 I couldn't get my breath, but somehow I got it back, so now I want to come and, and now I want to commit myself to you. It don't work that way. It will not work that way. You're going to have to come forth and give your soul over to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, while you are yet alive and well. You got to do it. Well, I won't say you have to do it, but you should do it. Because if you don't, and don't let people fool you about your good works going to get you in. It's not anything to do with your good works because your good works is only going to count for you if you make it in. But it's our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that made it possible for us. And he's the one that you're going to have to come to and ask him, Lord, please accept me in the family of Christians that I might be able to one day walk and talk with you, sup with you, and live with you. If there's one here, you may come now. If not, if all of us here are saved and in a covenant with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, all I can say is well done and God bless you. Let's stand to our feet. I'm sorry. I get up here and I start talking and I, 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 I you know, I, I just be trying to get the message out there, you know. But if there's anyone here that needs prayer for anything or someone you might know that you want to stand in proxy for. Just slip your hand up and God will see your hand and he already knows what's in your heart. He already knows. All you need to do is just let him know that you desire prayer and who is for me. And he will come in and touch your heart with healing power, with forgiving power, with loving power, with restoring power. Because he's a God that loves us all. No matter what stage we're in now, because he's looking down the road when we surrender to him that that is going to be a joy for them. Amen? Let us go to God in prayer. Father God, in the sweet, sweet name of Jesus, Lord, you saw the hands lifted up requesting to reach out to you, O oh Lord, and delinquish the agonies in our souls and hearts to let you know what we are suffering with, to let you know who we are seeking prayer for, and asking you, O oh Lord, to relieve our agony, 
to restore our illness and sicknesses, to regain our health, O oh Lord, as only you can. We're crying out to you, God, for our young folks, for our old folks, for those in between. We're crying out, God, for the sick and the shut in. We're crying out, Lord, for some of us to go to the sick and the shut in, to provide ways for them to get to church, to give them transportation. Give us that heartfelt initiative, oh Lord, to reach our sick and shut in, our elderly people that have no means to take care of themselves. Give us that burning desire, oh Lord, to step out and to touch them in a blessing way, oh Lord. Help them, Father, to do the things that they can't do alone. Help us to be there to give them finances in a critical situation. Help us to be there to pray with them when they're suffering and going through agony and having loneliness because they feel all alone in this dreadful world. Give us that desire, oh Lord, to want to step out and help each other, to be there for one another, to show love, show kindness, show peace, and don't be afraid to reach out and touch someone that are in need. Because we're doing well today, Lord, doesn't mean it's going to be our fate tomorrow. We might be what some of those people are tomorrow. So let us, Father, be known for our well done. So if we fall in those plights, oh Lord, someone would have compassion on us. We want to say thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. For all your goodness and your mercy. We want to say thank you, Father, for the pastor and the first lady. That the mercy that you are showing upon them. That the recovering power that you are restoring in them. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for all your goodness and all of your mercy. Oh, Lord, we just don't know what else to do except to praise your holy name, to submit our every need unto you, to open our hearts up to you, oh, Lord that you would continue to bless and keep us in these hours of need. This is my prayer, O oh Lord, for all these that are here, for all those that are out in the world that are listening on any type of devices that they might have. We ask, Lord, that you would continue to bless, keep, save, and strengthen us in these last and evil days. We thank you. And we say, Amen. 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 God bless you. And may God continue to be with you. You may continue to stand for our benediction. Oh, yes, my wife just uh, informed me to give you guys uh, uh, the, the <laughs> we, she has some Father Day gifts downstairs. And no, it's no, we have, we oh, have presentation for 
we have presentations okay. for the men. The men gave the women presentations on Mother's Day. So we, the women's ministry, have put together um, a bag for the men, um, for the men of God. Amen. See how you get blessed when you do things for someone else? Amen. And Pastor, we're going to ask that you would do the benediction. Mm -hmm. You're too Okay, raise your hand if your husband or, or the father of your child is not here. We want to pass these, those on right quick. Raise your hand so they can pass them out to you. Yes. We got a couple more down there. Okay, are there any others? I want to thank you one and all for being here today. Let's thank the Lord for the minister, ministering of the word today one more time. God bless you. Let us stand in the presence of God and one another. And now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory. To the only wise God be dominion, yes. power, yes. majesty, yes, both now and forevermore. Amen. 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 Can we say it one more time? Amen. Go in peace, my brothers and sisters. God bless you.